welcome back to my channel. My name is Kristen. Welcome if this is your first time stopping by. So today's video is going to be my spring summer TBR and we are going to do it based on my TBR jar. Now, this is overflowing. So to do this actually accurately without all these things falling out, I'm going to pour it into a bag and shake it up because I kind of like the way I put them into the jar, I just know that everything is kind of compartmentalized based on where they are on my shelves. So I'm going to shake it up and we are going to pick 15 to 20 books to read over the next three months. So I'm hoping May, June, July. Actually, I think we might be, we're going to aim for 20 books. Um, May, June, July. And if it, you know, it ends up going into August, that's fine. But I am super excited to do this because I have an entire like shelf full of books that I haven't read and my TBR cart. So there's so much that I want to do and read and I just need some help to have something kind of pick it for me. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into this video and let's pick out what my spring summer reads are going to be. Okay, so I'm pouring all of these into this bag. And we're going to give it, oh, there's even more stuck to the bottom. See? I told you, I really had to like shove, I had, I didn't have a jar big enough to hold all of them. So, okay, so we're gonna shake this bag up. Now I have 219 books in here. Granted, I do have an unboxing going for you guys as usual um, that has a ton more books. So I may just add those on as kind of mood reads for the month um, as we kind of go along. But for right now, this is what we have to pick out of. And I'm super, super excited. Number one, and I'm just sticking my hand in. I don't know what I'm gonna pick. I'm hoping for some of the ones that are actually on my cart because those are the ones I really wanna get to this year, so we'll see. Georgie All Along. Okay, Georgie All Along I have on my shelves, actually right here. This is a book of the month. I actually did start this and didn't finish it because I got distracted. I'm only on page 30, but this is a heartfelt tale of one woman's quest to reinvent herself. The acclaimed author of Love Lettering and Love at First delivers a poignant, witty reflection on how the hopes, dreams, and stories from our past shape our futures. Um, it says, honest and, honest and deeply emotional, Georgie all along is a smart, tender must-read for everyone who's ever wondered about the life that got away. So this is very summery and springy looking, so happy about that one. That one is a good one. And I'm gonna actually transfer this into my TBR jar so we can do that. Okay, number two. Twisted Lies. Now, I do have this set up where every book in the series, if I own it, is in here so i know that you don't have to read them in order but i kind of want to read them in order so i'm going to say that this one is twisted love so i'm going to put this actually back into the bag and i'm going to grab twisted love okay so i'm sure you guys have seen this everywhere these are super popular on tiktok but it is a romance novel by anna huang and it says you are the light to my dark sunshine without you i'm lost and then it says alex volkov is a devil based devil blessed with the face of an angel and cursed with a past he can't escape driven by a tragedy that has haunted him for most of his life his ruthless pursuits for success and vengeance leave little room for matters of the heart but when he's forced to look after his best friend's sister he starts to feel something in his chest a crack a melt a fire that could end his world as he knew it ava chen is a free spirit trapped by nightmares of a childhood she can't remember but despite her broken past, she's never stopped seeing the beauty in the world, including the heart beneath the icy exterior of a man she shouldn't want. Her brother's best friend, her neighbor, her savior, and her downfall. Theirs is a love that will never supposed to, that was never supposed to happen, but when it does, it unleashes secrets that could destroy them both and everything they hold dear. Another nice springy summer kind of cover because it's pastels. Very happy with that one. I've been wanting to get into that series for a while, so I finally got it. Let's go. Number three life's too short i think that's an abby okay so life's too short is another one of those books where you can read them separately but they are technically a series so i grabbed the first one in the series which i got from where did i get i got this from half price books and it is the friend zone and this is there's like three in the trilogy i believe so this one says the friend zone is a beautiful tale of learning to accept the love you deserve a zippy, instantly recognizable voice, and fresh, funny characters. 
And the lead in the lead female character's name is my name, so Kristen, spelled the same way. Kristen Peterson doesn't do drama, will fight to the death for her friends, and has no room for her life in her life for guys who just don't get her. She's also keeping a big secret, facing a medically necessary procedure that will make it impossible for her to have children. Planning her best friend's wedding is a bittersweet is bittersweet for Kristen, especially when she meets the best man, Josh Copeland. He's funny, sexy, never offended by her mile-wide streak of sarcasm, and always one chicken enchilada ahead of her hangry. Even her dog, Stuntman Mike, adores him. The only catch, Josh wants a big family someday. Kristen knows he'd be better off with someone else, but as their attraction grows, it's harder and harder to keep him at arm's length. The friend zone will have you laughing one moment and grabbing for tissues the next as it tackles the realities of infertility and loss with wit, heart, and a lot of sass. So, Abby Jimenez is known for having a lot of heart in her stories, and I'm very excited, and we of course have like our beautiful cover, but on the back we have a little dog, which is even better and another bright summery cover. Okay, number four. This is gonna be a long video. Okay, whoops. Number four is, oh, Shipwrecked. So again, <laughs> Shipwrecked is another book that's one of a trilogy, so I'm gonna grab the first one in that trilogy. So give me one second. So that trilogy, even though they are separate love stories, they are combined under the spoiler alert trilogy, I guess. This is by Olivia Dade, and I picked these books up because they have female main characters that are plus-sized. So very excited about this. And this one says, Marcus Castor Rupp has a secret. The world may know him as Aeneas, star of biggest show on television, but fan fiction readers call him something else. Book Aeneas would never. Marcus releases his frustration with the show by writing and posting anonymous stories about the internet's favorite couple, Aeneas and Lavinia. But if anyone were to ever discover his online persona, he'd be finished in Hollywood. April Whittier has secrets of her own, a hardcore Lavinia fan. She's long hidden her fanfic and cosplay hobbies from her real life, but not anymore. When she dares to post her latest costume creation on Twitter, her plus size, takes go her plus size take goes viral. And when Marcus asks her out despite her internet critics, truthfully officially truth officially becomes stranger than fan fiction. So it sounds cute, kind of like a actor, normal person <laughs> um, love story, which I absolutely love. Okay, we're on number five. Number five is One to Watch. Okay, One to Watch is a book that I bought um, because it has a plus size lead again. So this is like a bachelor take where she's the only plus size contestant and apparently this is a book of the month pick from a while ago as well but I got the paperback when I found this. I got this used but I'm very excited about this one as well. Let's keep it going. Number six, The Club. So The Club was a Reese's book club um, pick and I believe this is a thriller. Um, it says, there's no place like home. The group is a glamorous collection of celebrity members, clubs dotted across, doted across the globe, where the rich and famous can party hard and then crash out in its five-star suites, far from prying eyes of fans and the media. The most spectacular of all is Island Home, a closely guarded, ultra-luxurious -luxuri resort just off the English coast, and its three-day launch party is easily the most coveted A-list invite of the decade. But behind the scenes, tensions are at breaking point. The ambitious and expensive project has pushed the homes group, home group CEO and has long-suffering team to their absolute limits. All of them have something to hide, and that's before the beautiful people with their own ugly secrets even set foot on the island. As tempers fray and behavior worsens, the things get more sinister by the hour, and the body count piles up. Some of the island homes members will begin... To wish they'd never made the guest list so love me a good thriller and it has summary vibes because it takes place at a beach resort let's keep it going number seven yeah number seven happy place by emily henry yay i'm so excited it's so beautiful i love how bright this is totally summer look at the cover it is beautiful I actually kind of want to go into this blind, so I've seen a lot of reviews, but I haven't read the synopsis yet, so I'm going to keep this blind for myself, but I'm super excited. I love Emily Henry. Okay, number eight. Severance. Wow. Okay, Severance by Ling Ma. 
let me go grab it. This is Severance by Ling Ma. Um, honestly, it doesn't have like any indication of what this is about. And I could look it up. I think it has something to do with like a dystopian sort of life or end of life, end of world thing. The only blurb on here it says, is it the end of the world or just another day at the office? So this is super springy, super pretty and pastel. So I'm glad to add that to the list. Again, number nine. Okay. The Boyfriend Project. Okay. That is one I have on my list that if I don't read in the next couple months, then I'm going to get rid of. So, The Boyfriend Project by Farah Rashawn, I believe that's how you say it. Um, it says, why play by love's rules when you can make your own? Samaya Brooks never thought she would be that girl, but a live tweet of a horrific date just revealed the painful truth. She's been catfished by a three-timing jerk of a boyfriend. Suddenly, Samaya, along with his two other girlfriends, London and Taylor, have gone viral online. Now the three new besties are making a pact to spend the next six months investing in themselves, no men, and no dating. For once, Samaya is putting herself first, and that includes finally developing the app she's always dreamed of creating, which is the exact moment she meets the deliciously sexy Daniel Collins at work. So, gotta love it. Um, I'm hoping that this is really good. This is actually one of the ones that I've actually wanted to read, but I had it on low, kind of keep keep an eye out list because I haven't put it in my hands yet. Okay, number 10. And then we have 10 more to go. What is this one? Oh, Ishmael. So this is the book. This is actually a book that my brother wants me to read that he owns and he let me borrow. So it says, so begins Ishmael, an utterly unique and captivating novel that has earned a large and passionate following among readers and critics alike. One of the most beloved and best-selling no novels of a spiritual adventure ever published. I don't know what this is about, but I'm going to go in and read it. And this even is, looks to be um, marked up a little bit. What is the word I'm looking for? Annotated, I guess. So we shall see. Number 11. I got two. Okay. Forever in a Rough by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This one sounds so, so sad. Um, it's pretty much about this woman that she loses her husband. I believe it's her husband. Let's see. No. So she falls in love, head over heels in love with this man. And then nine days later, he gets hit by a truck while riding his bike. And then she just loses the love of her life all like right in the beginning. It just sounds super, super sad. The little blurb says, um, have you ever heard of supernovas? The shine brighter than anything else in the sky and then fade out really quickly. A short burst of extraordinary energy. I like to think you and Ben were like that. In that short time, you had more passion than some people have in a lifetime. So this is going to be heartbreaking, but I am excited to read it. This also has a soft cover, which I am obsessed with soft covers. Um, and it's by TJR, which everybody loves her. So anyway, number 12, Us Against You. Oh, okay. This is another one where I'm going to have to pick the first one. Okay, so Bear Town by Frederick Backman. This is now a TV show. I honestly don't know too much about it. I just know it's about a hockey team and that there's a lot of heart and emotion in this. So I'm going to kind of go into this blind, but that is the first one in that series. Okay, number 13. Okay, this is another one that is kind of on my radar that I need to read or I'm going to get rid of it. It's called Bet On It. Oh no, my battery's about to die. Okay, sorry about that. I needed to charge my uh, battery. So the last one I selected was Bet On It, which has a plus size main character. As you guys know, I love that. And let's see. The first times, the first time Aja Owens encounters the man of her dream, she's having a panic attack in the frozen fruit section of Piggly Wiggly. The second time, he's being introduced to her as her favorite bingo buddy's semi estranged grandson. From there, all it takes is one game for her to realize that he's definitely going to be a problem, and if there's anything she already has a surplus of, it's problems. In Walker Abbott's mind, there are only two worthwhile things in Greenbelt, South Carolina. The peach cobbler at his old favorite diner and his ailing grandmother. Dragging himself back after more than a decade away, he's counting down the days until Graham heals and he can get back to his real life. 
Far away from the trauma inside of those city limits, just when he thinks his plan is salad, Aja enters to shake everything up. A hastily made bingo-based sex pact is supposed to keep this thing between them from getting out of hand, especially when submitting to their feelings means disrupting their carefully balanced lives, but emotions are just like bingo callers. They refuse to be ignored. So I think this sounds really, really cute, and it's not a super long one. It's I think it's under 300 pages, so... Very excited, and again, with the Pastel's Perfect Springtime book. We're at 13, so... Woo, I just dropped. Our next one is... This is exciting, I like this. Anxious People, another Frederick Beckman. Let me get it. So, Anxious People has another soft cover, which I absolutely love, and I actually don't know much about this book. I just know a lot about this author and how well-loved he is. So when I saw this used, I had to pick it up, but there is just a little bit of emotion with this one. So let me read it to you. Looking at real estate isn't usually a life or death situation, but an apartment open house becomes just what just that when a failed bank robber bursts in and takes a group of eight strangers hostage. Each of them carries a lifetime of grievances, hurts, secrets, and passions that are ready to boil over. None of them is entirely who they appear to be. In short, they are the worst group of hostages in the world, but as the minutes tick by, they begin to suspect that the criminal mastermind holding them hostage might be more in need of rescuing than they are. As the authorities and the media surrounding the premises, these reluctant allies will reveal surprising truths about themselves and set in motion a change of events so unexpected that they can... They can hardly explain what happens next. So definitely more of a gripping and emotional story, but I'm very, very excited. Okay, so I think that was number 14. We have six more to go. I have like a whole thing over here that I'm like looking at that I'm hoping some of these get picked. This is, ooh, Finding Gene Kelly. Okay, let me grab it. Okay, so this is Finding Gene Kelly. Look how beautiful this cover is. This is by Tori Jean, and I actually got this from the author, and this was so, so beautiful. So she was promoting the new artwork, which, like, if you can see, this is literally the most summery spring book I've ever seen. Probably one of the most beautiful books I've ever seen. And I'm super excited about reading this. This is a romance novel, and this is a fake dating romance novel. So it says, Evie O'Shea's stale as a day old baguette life needs a shakeup. Enter Liam Kelly, her childhood best friend and high school rival, clad in the Henley and equipped with toned arms and eye crinkles that rival Gene Kelly himself. Initially, Evie is determined to keep her ultimate temptation at a distance when she flails wildly navigating life, love, and endometriosis on the banks of the CN. But when a family announcement rocks Evie's, wor Evie's world weeks before her brother's wedding, Evie seeks Liam's help to get through the wedding with semblance of sanity intact. Her request? Fake date. Making a deal with the devil always comes with a cost, though, and when Liam's conditions, which include elaborate backstories and practice dates, reignite passions her disease smothered long ago, Evie has learned to fight for her dreams and break free from her life measured in a heating pad setting, or else risk being alive but never truly living it. So I think this is going to be a really good read, and I just can't get over how beautiful this book is. So this is like, I'm so happy this one got picked. We have five more. Everything's fine. Oh. I don't know if I want this one, but I will grab it. Okay, so this is a book that I won an ARC for on Goodreads. And it apparently has the lowest rating I've ever seen on a Goodreads. It's like 2.5 or something, which is crazy. I've never seen a Goodreads rated that low. Um, and it's been told, like, there's apparently, like, a lot of, like, racism or issues with racism, like, addressed in the book, and it's, like, kind of not handled well. So I will put this in the TBR, but I'm not even sure if I'm comfortable reading it just based off of the reviews that I've seen. So we shall see about that. But... I mean, the cover is really cute, um, and I will try to give it a go, but if I find that I don't or am not enjoying it, I'm just going to probably pass it on. Okay. Next. Ellie is cool now. Okay, let me grab this book. This one is super, super cute. So this is Ellie is cool now. I got this at Target. But this was a Wattpad book that blew up enough that it became a big, a big novel, uh, you know, like traditionally published by Forever Publishing. So this is about a girl who did not have a good school experience, 
I think she was like super nerdy. She wasn't like very popular. There was like a lot of, I don't know if there was like bullying, but she just did not have a good career, but, or I mean, good high school um, experience. But then she ends up being a uh, TV writer for a high school show. And then when she goes back to her reunion, she's like super proud and excited to show the new her. But yeah, so this is also, I believe, co-written by Victoria Fulton and Faith McLaren. So by two authors. So I'm very excited to read this. And I loved the cover art. And it reminds me so much of like Legally Blonde. I know that it, I don't think it has anything to do with that. But I thought it was super cute. We got three more. Okay. Lessons in Chemistry. Let me grab it. So I'm sure all of you have heard about this book. This was Barnes & Noble's Book of the Year, um, and they have been promoting it forever. Love the cover. It's so bright, so summery, so perfect. It is a historical fiction novel, novel about a woman in STEM, so I am very excited to read this, and it comes with such high expectations, so I'm a little bit nervous. This book actually isn't that long. It's under 400 pages, which isn't bad, but um, I don't know. It just seems so intimidating because it's such a popular book, but I am excited to read it, and... I think it would be a really good summer read for sure. Okay, we have two more. And then of course, I'm gonna do my unboxing. I don't know if it's gonna be today or soon, but when I do that, those books probably will also be on my TBR as well. Okay, this is a big one and it's the start of a series. So let me go grab this. Okay, so the next book is Addicted to You. Now, I know that this is the beginning of a big story and I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about it because it does deal a lot with heavier topics, addiction to sex and addiction to I believe alcohol. Um, but I really want to read this. I want to get into this universe and Krista and Becky, Becca Ritchie are supposed to be such a dream team and writers that literally everybody loves. So I'm really hoping I love this and I will want to carry on with this story. But yeah, so I got this one and now we have only one more. I was truly wondering if I was going to end up with any sort of fantasy and this is what I got. This is Every Heart of Doorway, which is the first in the series that is super, super long, but apparently incredible. Every heart is a doorway. Every heart a doorway. <laughs> this is what it looks like. Now these are by Shannon or Shannon McGuire. I would say Shannon McGuire. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. But this is a series and it's still ongoing. I believe there's up to nine books now. And it's about these children. This is called the Wayward Children series. And it's about children who go into these different worlds through different doors. And when they come back, it's how they readjust back to regular lives. So each child has a different story each book is different and they're shorter they're like under 200 pages each i believe yeah this is only 171 so this is the first of the series and i've heard incredible incredible things about this so i'm super excited 